A small victory for Los Angeles landlords as the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals reinstated the legal challenge against the city's eviction ban. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing and Landlord News. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today. And once again, it's coming out of Los Angeles. So I've talked to you about all of the cases where landlords were suing the city, the county, the state of California for their, you know, different eviction moratoriums, eviction bans that were going on, right? And a lot of those cases, they got thrown out. They got thrown out by the federal judges. They got thrown out by the courts of appeals. And, you know, they're very left leaning, the judges and the court of appeals in that area, right? And so, the legal challenges, what the hope is, is that they get up to the Supreme Court and then a reasonable, logical conclusion is made saying that all of these things are unconstitutional. Well, that hasn't exactly worked out that way yet, but we do have some positive news in one of the battles against these eviction bans, right? And the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which generally is pretty, you know, progressive and left leaning, they actually reinstated the case that this landlord had against the eviction ban. So, you know, there, there still is the opportunity that these things will be found to have been illegal. And my hope is that one, landlords who suffered financial losses under the eviction bans, they are compensated by the government for what they did to them. Okay. And that that is the least, the least that could be done, right? But I also want to see these bans, I mean, permanently removed from the list of options. I mean, I want the ban to be banned, okay? I want an eviction ban to be banned. I don't want them to ever be able to do this sort of thing again because it is awful and it will be abused, okay? It was abused in this situation. Now, going into the future, you know, who knows what kind of emergency order is going to be necessary for whatever they deem to be an emergency. Okay. So this is bad stuff and we don't want to see it ever because it, you know, it conflicts with the constitution of the United States, not just with local laws or what the local, you know, uh, person in California who thinks they're a king th believes. Okay. This c violates the constitution in my personal opinion. That's why the Supreme court threw out the federal eviction moratorium. But, you know, I mean, this is a ridiculous thing. This is absolutely ridiculous. And we need some clear cut rules that ban this stuff. So before we get into the article, go ahead, hit the like, subscribe button, leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Do you believe that any of these legal challenges is going to get rid of the possibility of these eviction moratoriums ever happening again? Do you think landlords are going to ever get fully compensated for the losses that they suffered? And in this article, they describe, you know, a very, very bad situation that happened to this landlord in it. And, you know, I, I think it's important to get this sort of information out there that, hey, these are the consequences. And this isn't some, you know, huge corporation that has billions of dollars that was the one getting screwed over. This was a small landlord. OK, so anyway, let's get into this article and see what it says. This article is coming from the CaliforniaGlobe.com and it says, Small business owner still fighting the Los Angeles COVID era eviction ban. The county prevented him from trying to evict the non paying tenant or from even asking him for the rent. Yeah, the, the county basically said that even asking for the rent was illegal. <laughs> asking somebody to pay the rent was illegal. What, what a joke. Anyway, let's see the details in this article. In August, California property owners scored a victory at the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, but their battle is far from over. In an important ruling, the court reinstated Howard Eaton's uh, legal challenge to Los Angeles County's COVID-19 temporary eviction ban. That's the good news. The bad news for Mr. Eaton and thousands of other L.A. County rental property owners is that they still have a very long road ahead before they can recover from being forced to provide free public housing during the pandemic, if they ever do. Mr. Eiden is a retired auto mechanic who began leasing his commercial property to supplement his retirement. When COVID hit, Mr. Eiden's tenant and auto repair franchisee claimed that his ability to pay rent was adversely affected by the pandemic, even though his business was deemed essential and remained open. Thanks to the county's eviction ban, 
the tenant stopped paying rent and refused to leave. And see, this is something that I don't cover very often, okay? This is a commercial eviction ban that I'm talking about here, okay? Los Angeles actually put into place commercial eviction bans because, remember, they shut businesses down. They told people, hey, this is a stay-at-home order. You are not allowed to have these businesses open. You know, they destroyed so many small businesses. And, you know, like, I, I, I don't talk about that often because my focus is on landlords, you know, and... We see here that by doing that to the businesses, it inadvertently affected small landlords of commercial properties. OK, so, yeah, th this was something where you had somebody, you know, he's an auto mechanic who used to own his own shop and then he retired, still owned the building, rented it out to someone else. And then that someone else didn't pay rent for how long? You know, I mean, years years literally the county said that hey this person doesn't have to pay rent for years because they're suffering some sort of a financial hardship a financial hardship that the county itself created keep all this stuff in mind okay and the ridiculousness of the situation is obvious sitting here looking back like so you told these people they didn't have to pay rent and then you told the property owners that they would still have to pay their bills yeah yeah that's exactly what they did Mr. Eiton had no recourse. The county prevented him from trying to evict the non-paying tenant or from even asking him for the rent. The county also threatened to impose serious criminal and civil penalties on any property owner who tried to oust a non-paying, a non-rent paying tenant, even if that attempt was in good faith. The tenant's refusal to pay the rent he owed continued throughout the pandemic and to make matters worse, the tenant broke his word a second time when he refused to pay rent for a renewal of the lease, which Mr. Eiton agreed to in an effort to stem the financial bleeding. Adding insult to injury, the county not only prohibited Mr. Eiton from evicting the non-paying tenant, but also from attempting to collect overdue rent until a year after the county lifted the, pro the prohibition. And late fees or interest? Forget it. So yeah, he gets no late fees, no interest, they prohibited him from even asking the tenant to pay rent and even trying to collect it until a year after the eviction moratorium ended. Okay. And as far as I know, there was no pandemic related uh, <laughs> stimulus money coming the way of these business owners. Now, I remember there was what the PPP loans and all that, that supposedly would be forgiven. I don't know if commercial real estate like this would have qualified for a PPP loan because this is something where you don't have employees to pay. You just own the building. So this could be something where this guy just had to sit there, pay his mortgage on this property, you know, take the losses and his his tenant, you know, this other business got to stay in there for free, not paying rent for years, for years. I mean, what a joke. I mean, and nobody thought that, you know, that this was going to be abused. Of course it was going to be abused. And yeah, it, it is an awful situation to be placed in as a person who only owns one property. And that's what this guy, you know, keep in mind, I don't want you to think that, Hey, just because it's a commercial property, this guy was somehow like super rich or nothing. This guy owns one freaking property. Okay. One commercial property that he ran his own business out of until he retired. Whoa, <laughs> you know, I mean, come on. Oh, man. I mean, I, I hate to see how bad this is, you know, and I can't blame, you know, it's, it's hard to even blame the tenant. Okay, the tenant was taking advantage of the situation, right? But the, remember that the county shut down and said, okay, well, you know, um, businesses, they can't be open right now. So I'm in a lot of cases, they put these businesses in a position where they wouldn't be able to pay the rent anyway. Okay. So you're screwing multiple layers of people over. And yeah, I mean, it, this is a bad thing. This is a bad thing. And I feel bad for this landlord, but you know, th this goes to show you that, you know, we, we need to fight. We need to fight. I hope that this case gets a, somebody with common sense, someone with common sense reads this case and says, Hey, this isn't right. This isn't right. We cannot allow this to happen again. 
While the county claimed the eviction ban was to keep people in their homes or stop the spread of the virus, it didn't care that doing so was done on the backs of people like Mr. Iton, who rely on the timely payment of rent to meet their own financial obligations. Left without any other options, Mr. Iton sued the county, arguing the eviction ban violated his federal civil rights. The U.S. Constitution's Contracts Clause prohibits states and municipal governments from adopting any law impairing the obligation of contracts. The ban did just that. It effectively voided the term in Mr. Iton's lease with his tenant, and that t- and the tenant could remain on the property only as long as he timely paid rent. To defeat Mr. Iton's claim, the county took a shocking position. It argued that it that its eviction ban didn't prohibit him from trying to evict his tenant for non-payment of rent. How could that be? After all, the county's own law plainly said that property owners could not use the usual eviction process. The the county took refuge in a technical argument. It claimed that because the tenant did not provide Mr. Iton with the required formal monthly notices explaining why he wouldn't pay rent, the county's ban did not stand in the way. But the tenant had no incentive to provide formal notice and never did so. So yeah, they're, they're trying to use some kind of technical argument to, oh, well, you know, he didn't provide the notice, so he wasn't protected by it. But meanwhile, if the landlord actually did go go after this tenant and ask them to start paying rent, the the county would start fining him and start punishing him for even asking about the rent. So, yeah, this is such a messed up case. Okay, I'm not going to read the entire article. I I really think that, you know, if you're watching this video, you should read this article because, you know, this could have implications not just for commercial real estate. Okay, I, I. My hope is that they find, okay, well, you know what? All of these eviction bans, all of these eviction bans are illegal. They are unconstitutional and we need to throw them all out, okay?